Well, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, welcome and thanks for joining the analytical division town hall. Um, my name is Lisa Clement and uh, co-hosting with me today are Georgia Percaro and Francesca Giuffrida. Um, so we'd like to encourage you to put your cameras on so you can see each other and feel free to use the chat um, to connect with one another. You can um, send messages individually or to the group. And we'd also like to ask that you use the raise hand functionality if you have any questions throughout the town hall. Um, you can find that under the reactions button. Um, so you should be able to see the screen. Um, so here's our agenda for today. Um, and we're gonna do some real time polling later in the meeting. So if you have a smartphone, you're gonna wanna have that available um, to do that. If you don't have a smartphone, we can um, use the internet. So we wanted to start out uh, today with some uh, recognition. So uh, of course, thank you to everyone in the analytical division um, for joining today and for being part of the division. We wouldn't have a division without all of you. Uh, we wanna thank our session chairs for the analytical program, as well as the presenters of the talks and the posters. Um, and we appreciate all the extra efforts of the session chairs, the presenters, and our volunteers. We also want to thank our analytical division newsletter editor, uh, Susan Seegers. Um, and I just wanted to recognize Georgia Percaro, our analytical division vice chair, uh, and our scientific program manager for developing another excellent analytical technical program and recognize Francesca Giuffrida, our analytical division secretary and treasurer, as well as our education lead um, for putting together quality um, analytical webinars. So we'll move forward. Um, so we wanted to uh, take a pause to congratulate our analytical division winners. So this year's analytical division Herbert J. Dutton award winner was Hans Geert Jansen. And our analytical division student excellent, uh, excellence award winner was Ada Kaya. And you can hear Ada present during the general methods session in the analytical program. And then of course the, the Dutton session will, will have its own thing. So I'll hand it over to Georgia. So oh, thank you, Francesca. Hey, Francesca Lisa, sorry, and uh, hello, everyone. So uh, just a brief update on uh, uh, the program of this year annual meeting. As you all know, we have a, um, a series of uh, sessions that were open for uh, abstract submission. Some very, uh, some of the classical one within the uh, only analytical di division, like the one from the official method, the data on award session, of course, the trace contaminants, uh, the advanced method of analysis, including lipidomics, authentication of edible oils, rapid and high throughput, automation and sustainable methods, and the general analytical methods. And then we have some uh, uh, other uh, sessions, which are joint session with other di division. Can you please scroll to the next slide, uh, Lisa? And here are all the, uh, the joint uh, session that we are uh, finalizing to organize with the health and nutrition, with the protein and co-product division, the phospholipid division, and the processing division, and the lipid oxidation and quality uh, division. Which is the status of, uh, of these sessions uh, at the moment? So um, all the, the meeting received more than 500 abstracts uh, this year, of which uh, about 50 were uh, for the analytical uh, division. So if we look at the different session, can you scroll to the next slide, please? So we have uh, all the, uh, the analytical division that are uh, finalized or almost finalized, but with uh, no, uh, no particular uh, issue, uh, open issue. Uh, so we are sure that we will see these sessions uh, uh, in our annual meeting. If we have a look to the joint session, there are still some openings. So if you can scroll to the next uh, slides, um, you can see that we have almost finalized the analysis and quality control one. So uh, it's finalized was almost. The correlation of analytical markers of lipid oxidation with sensory analysis, there's no issue. 
Uh, we are close to finalize uh, the session with the uh, protein and co-product division. And uh, we have uh, some still open issue with the other two remaining uh, uh, sessions. Uh, so we are evaluating uh, how to proceed. We're still waiting for some uh, very last minute answers. And so we may uh, move towards emerging of these two sessions. This will be decided in the next uh, uh, couple of days, uh, mainly. So this is the situation for the annual meeting. And I, uh, I pass the, the word to Francesca. Thank you, Giorgia. So as uh, briefly uh, announced uh, by, by Lisa, so uh, uh, I'm uh, a little bit responsible of the educational part. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to announce uh, to all of you that uh, uh, this year we will have uh, an exceptional speaker, Dr. Uh, uh, Kim Akros, who is going to uh, give a webinar uh, on lipidomic minimal report checklist. And the idea is really because uh, we, we observed that there are many uh, publications about uh, lipidomics data and uh, uh, we would like to, uh, let's say, align a little bit the way of uh, doing uh, lipidomics and treat uh, the uh, data from lipidomics. And uh, Kim Cross will give uh, this webinar uh, to summarize the, the step uh, of the lipid, uh, the different step of the lipidomic workflow and uh, how, uh, perform the analysis and especially how to uh, perform the data processing. Uh, probably most of you know Kim Ekros, that was is uh, practically the, the pioneer of the, of the lipidomics uh, uh, untargeted analysis. And uh, I invite all of you to join uh, the webinar that will be in uh, uh, March, uh, on the 2nd of, uh, of March. We, uh, I have the intention to organize a, a second webinar uh, during the year. And uh, later on, uh, Lisa will uh, probably ask you us the feedback, which type of subject arguments would you like to uh, have as a uh, uh, subject of, uh, of the webinar? That's all from my side. Lisa, I pass the word to you. I cannot hear Lisa. Sorry. Um, so you should see on the screen. Thanks, Francesca. Um, you should see on the screen now the QR code as well as the website for www.menti.com. And so what this is, is a tool that will allow us to ask some questions and allow you to answer them. And we can see how, um, how we all answered the questions in real time, and it'll help facilitate uh, discussion and give everybody a chance um, to share their thoughts. So uh, what you're going to want to do, if you haven't used a QR code before, um, you just you take your phone and you open up the camera, and then you aim the camera at the QR code as if you're going to take a picture. Um, but instead of taking a picture, you should see a um, little icon pop up that says menti.com. Menti so if you click that little icon, mine's yellow, it'll take you to the poll. If you don't want to use a QR code, you can type in to your internet browser, www.menti.com, and then I'll ask for the code and you can type in the code that's listed there, 54914016. And so if someone could just type that code in the chat um, in case someone joins after um, I've moved to the next slide. That would be great. And then yeah, once you get did. to, okay, thanks, Bill. And then once you get to the survey, um, if you could just hit the little heart, um, just so 
it's an indication to me um, on the screen how many people have been able to access it uh, before I move to the next slide. So I'll just pause here if anyone has questions to access or needs help. Okay, and so I will move ahead and then, okay. So this is, um, these are called uh, sliders. So you should be able to see on the screen the same information that's on your phone. The view is just a, a little bit different. So the question here is in regard to our our lunch, our analytical division lunch. So historically, we've had an on-site lunch at the AOCS annual meeting. We're planning to do the same um, for this year, but we just wanted to see if there was interest in changing this up at all to either have the, the lunch off-site or to have a dinner. So you can see on your phone, there's the different options and the little sliders. You can slide it to show um, your interest in in those three things. So on a scale of one to five with one um, being um, unfavorable and five being favorable, you can put the slider there and then um, make your choices. And then you can hit the submit button. And then on your screen, you can see the average is what's in the circle here. And then this shaded is sort of the, the distribution. So for example, the on-site lunch is maybe a little more polarized, whereas um, the off-site lunch may be leaning a little bit towards less favorable. Um, and we'll leave this open afterwards as well. So those that aren't on the call right now have an opportunity to share their thoughts as well. Lisa, we have a so, question from uh, P. Del Monte. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, unmute him. Oh, he's unmuted. So go ahead. Hey, uh, Lisa, can you uh, compare the cost to the two options? Um, that's a great question. We haven't done that yet. But we can we can look into that. Um, we just wanted to find out if it was something people were, I guess, interested in. The economic should drive uh, the choice, considering how it these events uh, are marketed now. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to consider that. Okay. So the next question, this is um, similar, but this is getting at if, if we were to change the format, would you be willing to attend? So again, the on-site lunch, off-site lunch, and then off-site dinner with, with one, two, five, one being unlikely to attend and five being yes, you would attend. And then the next question, um, you know, as you know, we incorporate the Dutton presentation in our lunch event right now. So if having an offsite lunch or dinner meant we could not incorporate the Dutton presentation in the event, um, you know, would you still would you still um, be willing to do it? Okay. Okay. And then this was an idea that Georgia and Francesca and I had for this year. Um, during COVID, we didn't have the on site in person roundtable discussion because we were virtual. So we had a virtual roundtable, and that seemed to work really well. So we're going to do that again this year. And we were thinking that to accompany that, we could have a a more informal discussion, you know, a happy hour while we're in Colorado face to face, and then follow that up with the more formal um, virtual discussion of the analytical program after the annual meeting. But we wanted to see how everyone else felt about that. 
So on a scale of one to five, again, try to put the, the uh, disfavorable as one and then the favorable as five. Okay. Well, and just to be uh, clear, uh, Lisa, the, the virtual round table, those are going to happen um, no matter what. And then, you know, the on-site, ideally we'd have both, um, but the virtual definitely has to happen. And the on-site, um, we also expect to happen, um, just to make, just be clear. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Okay. And then um, we want to see if you're interested in, in trying a standing format to facilitate more interaction and networking. And so um, with the different options, so for an on-site lunch, for an off-site lunch, or for the round table happy hour, um, if you'd prefer like the seated format or uh, the opportunity to walk around and network. Okay, um, and now the next question. So this is an open-ended question. Um, you're limited to 250 characters, but you can submit um, more than once. So if you just try to keep your idea kind of with under 250, and then if you have another idea, you can submit again. Um, so we would like to hear what uh, webinar subjects you'd like to see presented by the analytical division. And we can leave this open as well if you have ideas that come up um, after. Okay. And then if you can continue to add comments, we will see them. Um, I just want to move ahead to keep us going. Um, this next question is um, just around if you enjoyed the poll um, and then if you had any other feedback that you wanted to share, um, that feedback is welcome. And it, it is uh, anonymous as well, so. Okay, um, so that was the end of the questions and we will keep the poll open. So if you have other ideas or wanna give additional feedback, um, you're welcome to do that. And we'll also resend the uh, QR code. Okay, so I think I stopped sharing is that right? Yep. Okay. So, okay. So that was everything we had in terms of planned content. And now just wanted to open it up if there's questions, um, comments, and give everybody a chance to interact outside of the annual meeting. So if you have a question, um, just feel free to raise your hand in the under um, reactions. You can also unmute yourself if you just, if there's not a lot of questions, you don't wanna use the raise hand function.
Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. I should have planned some uh, some uh, fun games or something. I thought there would be more questions. Oh, here, maybe Bill, can you answer that? The How many people are in the division? Oh, you're muted. I believe it's between about 200 and 240. Um, I'll I can get an exact look shortly and put it in the chat. Maybe I have a question. How many people in the in the meeting will join uh, the conference this year? In addition to myself, George and Lisa. I will definitely be there. Right, Bill. Brian, who has? Rick? I'm planning to attend, yeah. Should like we, 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 yeah. we put it in the chat? Yeah, that's a good idea. I think that the answer will reflect a bit the difficulty that we are having uh, with uh, finding uh, speakers this year as well, because out of 17, if we can't also our three, we are 10 sure to attend. Uh, so uh, Ralph, roughly half of us are not sure yet. And this is was one of the problem for organizing the, uh, and still one of the problem in organizing the meeting, because a lot of speakers just decline because they are not allowed to travel or they, <laughs> don't will to travel. So I think that this year will be the real after pandemic year where we will understand uh, what has happened during these last couple of years. Yes, yeah, so you guys are right at about uh, 247. And what sessions had the most submissions? Georgia, do you want to? I actually do not have this answer because I don't see like divided by submission for session and uh, some abstracts are moving around. So I still cannot give this information. Someone asked, was there any uh, trend in popularity? Oh, wait a second. Do you mean for the divisions? I believe there was a graphic for the divisions. I'm not sure if we could answer that within analytical oh, topics. Okay. Wait, I opened the last update that I received.
Lisa, anything exciting that's going to be coming out in the newsletter? Um, well, I think the, the thing we're most looking for right now is the lipidomics webinar by Kim Ekros and going through that the minimal checklist for doing lipidomics workflows. I think that'll be exciting. Um, and then just preparing for the analytical um, program at the annual meeting. I don't know. Those are the two top things for me right now. I don't know if anyone else has things in mind, Georgia or Francesca. We also have, um, you know, the volunteer positions um, and elections for the divisions open now. Um, so people can be submitting um, if they want to be a volunteer leader for the division, um, both on the executive steering committee um, and in additional positions, if they want, you know, like a newsletter editor or anything else that they can think of. Um, so be have to look out for that and make sure you pass that on to anyone that you think might make a good leader or that would um, maybe want, you know, to, to join the leadership group. And that'll be in the, you guys' the newsletter as well. Um, Pierre is asking any change in the NWARD program? Um, Dutton students uh, sponsored travel for students and posters. Um, I don't know of any big changes. Um, we had eight uh, poster submissions. So um, it would be great to have more posters. And I believe last year we talked about, um, you know, people don't have to be present to present a poster. They could send it and then have their contact information. And so um, I don't know if we publicized that for this year, but that would definitely be something for next year to share. So maybe at the poster session, we can publicize that so people are encouraged to submit if they can't travel. I don't know, Bill, is there any changes in anything from the AOCS perspective? Not that I'm aware of, but I can double check with my colleague. And then also um, be on the lookout. Bill, I'll be sending out an email um, probably today or tomorrow to the executive steering committee of the divisions um, for E the student e-poster pitch um, competition. Uh, we're looking for judges for that. Um, so keep keep an eye on, on that for email coming through. And then um, if you're interested um, as a member to being a judge, um, just let you know one of us four know and we'll get it taken care of. Do participants have to attend the meeting to participate in the poster pitch? No. Uh, Pierre's asked, how's the winning student rewarded? Um, I believe the AOCS reached out to Ada um, to inform her she had won that award. Um, we also present her the award if she, at the analytical luncheon and then uh, she'll be in the general methods session presenting a talk if you, if you wanna hear her present. Um, I don't believe that funding comes out of the analytical uh, budget if I recall correctly. Uh, the student award, um... is you guys have budgeted $550 for it. The student poster competition is funded by the AOCS Foundation. Oh, okay, that's us thinking. That one. Are there any other questions or, or topics that people would like to discuss? or news that anyone, any of the members would like to share in regard to uh, analytical? Well, if not, I think we can wrap this up. 
Um, and we will send the link with the QR code. So you're welcome to add additional thoughts to the polling. I want to thank everyone for joining and participating. This was something kind of different that we wanted to try out. So appreciate your participation. Um, have a great rest of your day. Uh, Georgia, Francesca, anything you'd like to add? Just have a great day, everyone, and thanks for joining. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.